So I just got Notion recently and I've been keeping all my plans for like everything on here and I've started structuring my videos on here. So you might see me reading off of this because my brain is small and all my stuff is here. I'm pretty sure you guys already understand the premise of this video, so I won't go in depth too much, but basically I'll be showing my art from March 2020 to currently. So that's all the art I made in quarantine. And I guess we're still in quarantine because Americans are special. So I've separated this video into three different divisions. I have all of the small things in my sketchbooks that could be considered pieces if I were to rip them out. The second division is digital art, which I do all of it on Procreate. And then division three is the big giant full pieces that are for AP art. All right, division one, small pieces in my sketchbook. So I have two sketchbooks that I use for this kind of theme of pieces with one exclusion from a bigger sketchbook that I ripped out because I wanted to keep it as a full piece. This is my shit book. I've mentioned it before, but I have a few small pieces that, you know, like I said, I could probably rip out and consider them to be full pieces. This is a portrait of a friend at school that I did. Her name is CJ. She's very pretty, so I wanted to draw her. This was alcohol markers and colored pencils on top, and there's Posca markers in the background. Yay! I genuinely thought I had more. Wow. Okay. So this is the tone tan sketchbook. Some of the stuff I would do at school when we had school. This was from quarantine, I believe. This is um, Toy and Solo. So I really hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I wanted to draw them because they're so pretty. And here's a portrait of India Moore because they're also so beautiful. And I was watching Pose so much over and over. <laughs> here's a no-name portrait. I had just gotten my new pencil sharpener, so she was looking real smooth. And that's all I have in this one. So there's not really much in these, honestly. I really thought there was more, but there's just not. And then this is from a bigger Canson mixed media sketchbook. It's Marlin, but it doesn't really look like him, so. Now I'm gonna do the second division of art, which is on my iPad. Yeah, like I mentioned, I did all of this stuff in Procreate. So this was the last piece I did for my AP Art Sustained Investigation of junior year. It was like the 10th piece, I believe. I used the Plimsoll brush, which I used for a lot of my digital stuff. It's very like, I don't know, it's almost like you see the texture of a canvas when you're using it, so it feels very realistic and that's why I love using it. Yeah, that's the main brush I used for this. I don't remember using any other brush. Here's a portrait of JPEG Mafia that I did and I used the same brush. I didn't really know what to do with the background, but... And then here's a portrait of my friend Tayara. I wanted to do something for her because I was drawing all my friends because I missed them because we were quarantined. I also drew my friend Ellie. You might actually know her from TikTok. She's um, kind of famous. Kind of famous. I also drew my friend Rachel and I wanted to do like a cool effect for this one. So I did this for Inktober actually. I think it was the last thing of Magtober that I wanted to do and was willingly going to do. It was for the theme Mecca, I think. I don't know. I made some robot cat lady and I later kind of developed her into my own little character thing. Here is a piece that I did for this year, my senior year in AP art. I'm focusing on more feelings of like comfortableness or uncomfortableness and kind of showing the difference of what it is to me in my life. So this one was about me just kind of sitting in the grass drawing with my mask on because that makes me comfortable when I'm in public. It took a very long time, oh my goodness. I started designing tattoos. I am currently 17, so I cannot tattoo people. But if I were to, I would have a lot of flash designs. This is for an art telephone that I participated in with my school's NAHS, which if you don't know or you don't have one, it's National Arts Honor Society. Um, it sounds all like prestigious, but it's literally just an art club, so. This is the most recent digital piece I did. It was about distance togetherness because my teacher wanted us to do something involving juxtaposition and um, it also needed to be related to our theme. So I was like, okay, so let's include my dad's effort to make us comfortable by wearing a mask. I also just didn't really know what to make a piece on. So I just 
you know, I conjured it up a little bit. That's all my digital art. Yeah, that's it. Uh -huh. This is my trusty iPad Pro. On to section three, my favorite part. Division three is the full pieces almost they're all for AP art, actually. I was gonna say almost all of them, but they most definitely are. So I'm gonna start with the pieces from last year. The ones I did from home last year were these two. So I actually started this one at school and I came home. It was untouched for a while because nobody knew if we were going back or how we were gonna be graded or any of that jazz. It was just sitting in my room for a while, like halfway done and it's acrylic paint, by the way. I didn't really know what to do for this piece originally, so I just took a picture of myself and went with it. This is the biggest size that College Board allows you to do. I believe it was 18 by 24. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's a self-portrait, and I did a lot of those last year because my brain is just so smooth and small. I don't know what this is, but maybe it means something in my subconscious that I have yet to actually discover myself. I don't know. I mean, maybe it represents the corona times, even though this was started before corona. You put your own meaning to it, I don't know. Interpret it how you will. So this piece was... I don't know how to explain it without sounding like... I don't know, I just feel bad explaining this, but basically my family comes from a state of financial stability and... I mean, all of us had messed up teeth except for me, which is kind of weird. Like, both of my parents' teeth are like terrible. My mom had to have braces twice, actually. Um, but my teeth were fine. And I made this piece because I felt some kind of guilt about having straight teeth. But then there are people I know who are not in that state of financial stability and still had to pay thousands of dollars for braces, which is like so messed up. It's not just about teeth, it goes beyond the teeth. It goes on bigger scales and bigger stories. So this is just like a small example of that kind of situation that I'm in. I'm really not trying to sound like I'm a victim of anything because I'm really not, but it's just kind of a commentary, I guess. I'm trying to go in chronological order of these so y'all can really get a feel. I don't think my art developed too much in the past year, but I did make some art, so I want it to be in the correct order. Fun fact, I was so excited to start AP Art again that I actually made this painting before the year started. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm ahead of the game. I'm ahead of everybody. I'm gonna be cruising through art this year. I definitely overcomplicated this, but I meant to say that I can only do a drawing portfolio this year and I can't do paintings and stuff. Basically, this is invalid. If I really wanted to, I could submit this piece to College Board. I just don't think they'd appreciate it because it's an oil painting and there's not much drawing in it. But yeah, it's about me and my sister. Over the summer, my dad took this picture of us when we went to the beach. It was not a crowded beach, uh, thank god. It was a nice little bonding moment, so. And the sun is like a closed eye representing the calmness. And I wanted this to be a continuous theme throughout my art this year because I wanted like the closed eyes to be very like mellow feeling and then any art with like open eyes hidden in it is like uncomfortable. I don't know why I did that. This is the second piece I did. So the piece is titled The Source. I did it with colored pencil. I distorted the background in Procreate and then added the eyes on my own. So that's kind of what's going on here. And basically I'm looking through all my clothes and I'm contemplating and thinking about like, where is the source? Where did they come from? Was this dress a product of child labor? Like, am I contributing to that? And it's such a normal thing to like, go to Forever 21 and just splurge on all this stuff that you're probably not gonna wear in a year, so... Yeah, and there's also just so many different things, things that are valid, but just lots of information about how there's no ethical consumption under capitalism, or how a lot of the poor people in America are going to gravitate towards buying cheap clothes online just because it's their only option. I don't blame anyone for doing that, but like, if everyone keeps doing it, then there's this like vicious cycle of just buying unethical clothing and it's out of our control and just so much stuff going on. So that's what I made this about. The last piece I want to show you guys is this one. For legal reasons, this is not a photo of me, but it's basically about feeling comfortable in your body and looking at yourself slouched and relaxed, not 
posing for anything, not posing for social media, not trying to look good, and feeling good and feeling confident. And that's a feeling that I've only experienced as yet of the past year or so. And it's liberating and I hope that everyone is able to feel that feeling because it's truly liberating. I already said that, but you know what I'm trying to say. So for the reference picture, I layered two different images of different opacities and then I tried to draw it. So that's, that's what's going on here. I know it's very chaotic, but like, I don't know. It's a specific kind of energy that I wanted to capture. So, yay. I did this with my Sharpie oil paint pens because I love them. All right. I did not mean to throw that like a frisbee. As we close this video down, I just wanted to say, um, when quarantine started, I started watching different YouTubers like Kelly Stamps, Lynn Truong, Matthew Sorgi, Lil Star Nerd, Radia Rahman, I don't know if I'm saying that right, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, Mew Tripled and Jess Carp, just to name a few. And Kelly Stamps in particular made a certain video, I don't know the exact title, but it was like, why you should make a YouTube channel, you should make a YouTube channel now. And it filled me up with this motivation and this certain energy that just made me want to push through and get somewhere with a YouTube channel. Thank you, Professor Stamps, because I would not be here without you. I would not be, I would not have made this channel. I don't know. I'm so glad that I've been able to make this little community of little art babies. It feels so nice. I feel so nice that I'm able to like, look at these comments saying like, you inspired me to make art for the first time in like a month. That feels very narcissistic to say, but it really does make me happy when I see stuff like that. Thanks Kelly Stamps and thanks for COVID for putting me in this state of very much boredness. I love each and every one of you guys. Like seriously, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have an amazing day or night, whatever time it is. That's a wrap. All right, I love you, bye.